Ashkar. JJ, Hi. how are you? Great. How, how are you? I am doing wonderful. So with that, I am going to turn it over to you folks. Just a quick reminder before I do, put your questions in the Q&A panel next to the stream. And at the end of JJ's talk, we'll get to your questions and make sure that uh, you can get those answered. So JJ, with that, I will turn it over to you. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, hi. Yes, I'm JJ. Uh, I work for IBM. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing an IBM t-shirt. That's how you know. Um, but I am going to today talk about using InSpec uh, to validate VMware templates. Uh, if you don't know, VMware templates are a way to create cloned machines to stamp out um, VMs, basically inside of VMware. Now, I was originally going to spend some slides and all, but due to the time restrictions, I'm just going to jump right in and show some, some code. And hopefully that's what people want to see. And then you can take my repo if you so choose. Uh, and play around with it, and then maybe even edit it to make yourselves a little bit easier. The goal of this talk is just basically um, make sure that you have something to start with. There's so many people out there who have no idea where to start when it comes to this, and this is just a simple example to get that done. So let me start sharing my screen, and we'll share in the screen now. Let's see. Oops. Uh, there we go. So I would be remiss by first not mentioning uh, Call for Code. Uh, IBM gives me a lot of uh, leeway to be able to speak at different conferences and, and, and supports me and being able to tell the, tell the story. One of our big pushes right now is something Call for Code, which allows you to help use uh, software to fight, including um, many other uh, disasters and, and issues around the world, but we are focusing this year on COVID-19. So just humor me, go to uh, callforcode.org. Um, and uh, kind of just poke around, uh, that would help me uh, validate me being able to come and speak at things like this. Okay, so now let's talk about the tools we're gonna be using. Well, your boss or your, your company has decided we, are, we need to have some way to uh, start validating our templates in a, an, efficient, an, efi an efficient manner. Well, I'm gonna put together something called, uh, using something called Ansible, which will do some automation for you something called Packer specifically, which will actually automate and build the templates for us. I'm gonna use the VMware plugin for, um, for Packer, which will actually build the ISO for us. And then at the very end, I'm gonna use something called Chef Inspect, which will validate the templates to make sure it's what I expect it to be. Um, if you've never seen, this is actually a VMware console on the IBM cloud because you can get VMware on IBM. And uh, we are gonna play around in some of the templates. I have this repo here, which I can give out after the talk inside of Slack, if, so, if you so choose, uh, where it has all the code that we're going to be playing with. And the beauty of this is that it really is just stripped down. So we, we you see the very bare minimum to get the things done, which is nice. And then finally, we're going to be using Jenkins because everyone uses Jenkins at some point in their career. And it's kind of just a nice universal way of explaining all this. You can use all the different other CDs, uh, CI, CD, um, pro, uh, systems out there, but specifically, I'm going to be using Jenkins because I thought it was more universal. Okay, so I am going to minimize that to make sure I have my notes. So the first thing first, um, I truly believe that the uh, templates you should have and use configuration management to build up from the ground up is so uh, we're going to take this golden image, which is just a base install of Debian, I'm going to create a new template for it, and I'm just going to call it AOEU because I'm a nerd and type in Dvorak. Um, and I'm going to build this, this template very simply and power it on. It'll take a second to do because, you know, computers. Um, but as this comes up, I want to prove to you that it is a, a blank template with nothing on it. And what we're going to do is I am going to first install using this playbook right here. I'm going to install Nginx. So we're, we're just going to run, the, run, run the, the pipeline to make sure it all works and get Nginx on there. But first, I'm going to prove to you that there is nothing there. So bring this up. And then is this up and running? Are you there? Refresh. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. 
Waiting for VMware tools like you always do. Come on, VMware tools. Or open VM tools, I think it is now. Because open source. Singing along, waiting for the thing. Do, do, do. There we go. So it's uh, 225. All right. So I'm going to do SSH admin E or admin E. Let's do 16 and 225. There we go. So if you don't know, um, the first thing that Nginx does is creates an Nginx directory. And as you can see here, ls-l, Nginx, it is not there. Cool? Cool. We all agree that this is a, a blank, blank template, very, very basic Debian 10. And it's all it's going to show there. But now what I'm going to do as this is going, I am going to kick off this build. And I'm going to build master because that is what I want. Master. So I'm going to build master here. And we'll let that run. While that's running, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, ins or, uh, Ansible, if you don't know. As you can see, it's, uh, it's written in uh, YAML. Um, you'll be able to make sure that using the apt resource that it'll pull in Nginx and make sure it's uh, the latest version. And it updates the cache to make sure that we have um, the apt get repo there. Also, as you notice, very importantly, it starts Nginx on there. Um, this is very vital for later on in the um, this narrative where what I'll end up doing is I'll end up creating a PR um, where I'll actually end up adding a user. And then I'm going to show the actual security portion of it, which is the inspect making sure is how I would expect it to be. So as you can see here, we are actually building the, the main Packer image now. And here we go. It's cloning the VM. Again, waiting for um, uh, VM tools to come up. As this goes, um, InSpec is basically a compliance language where you can write in very simple English-like language to make sure that things are the states the state you expect it to be in. Uh, specifically, what we're going to be doing is validating a very simple profile, which is um, making sure in, uh, uh, Nginx is the state we expect it to be in, which I will show you here in a moment. And then also, um, you can pull in other profiles from other other people or other companies or good de uh, straight defaults, uh, which we'll do here in just a second, um, to make sure that, for instance, uh, Etsy hosts isn't set to 777, for instance. That's usually a bad thing. Um, as you can see, some sanity checks, there is a Linux baseline right here uh, to make sure that Etsy shadow exists in the states we expect. If you look here, there's a bunch of good open source DevSec um, Linux baseline, so you can just slurp in to make sure that your um, your profile is set uh, uh, to same defaults. Again, this is one of those things that if you just put it inside of your pipeline, you know, since in this case my Jenkins pipeline, this will always run. This will always make sure that um, my my repo or my my template is exactly as as secure as it can be by these open source standards. Um, and it, it as you can see, it took no time at all, which in turn allows for you know one less thing to worry about. Okay, and then as you can see, it's pulled in the Nginx profile here, and I'll bring up Nginx while it's going just one last time. Um, we are going to validate that every single time that this directory should exist here, um, this uh, the actual Nginx um, application is up and running and has correct permissions, and most importantly, uh, that Nginx should be actually running. Um, this is uh, due to later on the narrative here. And as you can see, we do some um, PowerShell and make sure everything's built. And we see that we have a green pipeline. Yay! All good. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back to that exact same file here. And I'm going to put in a PR here where... We are going to oops, going to add an ops user. Um, so as you can see, it's the exact same code. We're at Nginx, and now we're on top of the same code. We're going to put inside of this PR user. So I'm going to come over here and go back here. Get check out dash b jj or good PR. Okay. Oops. PR two because I'm lazy. Okay. Get status. 
git add git commit. I'm a good t good pr. Git push origin good pr two. Okay, because I have um, engine or my Jenkins instance tied up against the repo and all, uh, we will take it. But take about a minute or so for the actual kickoff to happen. But again, this is just making sure the pipeline is doing what I expect it to do, which is, you know, add this new user. The beauty of it is, um, as you will see here in a moment when this kicks off, I actually have two different JSON files to tell the uh, and uh, to tell specifically um, Jenkins what to do. What we're going to create is actually another template with uh, the name of the machine, Debian-PR, which you'll see here in a moment. So I can actually go validate it myself, even though I have all the autom uh, automatic validation, but if the PR breaks, for instance, it'll put it into a state where it'll be broken, but I can at least see why it broke. So instead of blowing away the, the template after the fact, I can actually go do the investigation uh, on the machine to make sure it's what I expect it to be, which is wonderful. Okay, it should be happening any minute. And of course, ah, there we go. As you see, it's pending and it's going to pull this in just a moment. Um, we will see here, uh, it takes about two minutes as you can see, which isn't too bad. Um, again, this is just a demo. Uh, so as we'll go, and we're installing. Now, you don't actually have to install a lot of this stuff every single time if you don't want. Um, you can um, uh, make this quicker. Um, oh, no. What happened here? Uh, Debian gold not found. That's not good. Oh, it's because I didn't actually create it. Um, OK. I need to change the name. One of the beauties of the, the thing I do is I actually, if you notice, I take a tame stamp and create the gold image. So I can always roll it back. Every time I push out master, I create a new stamp of the original gold image. So if something goes horribly, horribly wrong, I have that actual template there to run, run backwards. So what I'll do is I will delete this first. And I was actually in my notes too. Huh. Story of uh, live demos, I guess. And then I will take this, delete that, okay. Now, if you, if you haven't noticed, um, if you are a VMware user, you're probably wondering, JJ, that should all happen like automatically. Why do you keep refreshing it? Turns out I have to go through a proxy, but that's a different conversation for an, another day. Okay, let's try that again. So I will go ahead and come over here and I will, because I am paranoid, I am going to do this because I have actually seen that go awry before stage commit. Moment. Because like all good ops guys deep down inside, I write the best the um, best comments. I was trying to make a joke, but I'm thinking now. Git push origin good PRQ. Now I'm cognizant of the time. I'm trying to shoot past this stuff as quickly as I can to make sure that we have some time for questions if, if so we so desire. Uh, come back over here. Show me some, come on, come on. Um, so let me go ahead and while this is running, I will show the actual Jenkins file that I have as an example here. Um, Jenkins files are written in Groovy if you didn't know. Um, as you can see, I this is very honestly kind of hacky, but it, it, does, it does what we're expecting it to do, which as we saw, it installs Packer. It makes sure and sees what branch it's on. If it's anything other than master, it grabs in a variables file. And then, um, sorry, if it is if it is master, it grabs in my default variables file, which has the names that I'm expected to be, and then the PRs. And then if it is anything other than master, it pulls in the not master one, which I'm, again, naming is hard. Uh, then it runs Packer, as we've seen. Uh, and then it goes ahead and, and builds um, the other version. And then it runs a very simple um, Power, Power CLI script uh, to make sure it changes the names for us, which as this is going, as we can see, as we see we're building the Packer image right now because it's starting to be nice to me. Oops, starting to be nice to me. Uh, while that is running, I will show you the convert the gold machine. 
Uh, please don't pay attention to that password. Um, as you can see, it does just some very basic power CUI things. Again, you can't actually get to this vCenter, so you know, I'm, I'm okay with showing that. Please don't steal that password. Um, let's see here. And the next goal, um, which if I have my timing down properly, uh, we will be going ahead and, you know what, I will just go ahead and prep that now. Um, we're going to go ahead and say that that was successful, but it turns out because the world is an evil place sometimes, um, we've had someone decided, oops, we've decided, someone has decided to move from Nginx to Apache and they went ahead and changed the, uh, the playbook here to stop Nginx, uh, remove Nginx, and then ensure that uh, Apache 2 is installed and then uh, make sure we start Apache 2. Now, if you notice, um, this is them just changing the playbook. So they went along and pushed this in and we're like, hey, wait a second, that's not, that's not great, but okay, go ahead and do that. Oh, and as you can see, We've had our inspect, we've everything, everything is built up how we expect it to be. And then git checkout master, git checkout b bad pr2. So I come back over here. Oops. So they've come along and decided to push this in. Yes, yes. Status. Okay, get add, uh, get commit dash b. Um, I'm a bad actor. Get push origin bad pr2. So somebody's come along and decided that they really, really wanted Apache instead of Nginx. Uh, but as you'll notice um, here in a moment, It'll actually push everything out, build it exactly how we expect it to, and double check that we still have that Debian gold. Here we go, good. Uh, I just lost the repo. Copy. Paste and go. So we'll create this uh, repo again. I'm a bad actor. And I again, I apologize for shooting past, shooting through this so quickly, um, but hopefully you're starting to see how all the different pieces come together where we'll have the actual good, um, good process with the inspect checking to make sure that it does what we expect. But now when we have someone who has not updated the inspect profile because we're already just running it, we make sure that the status is there and everything will happen. We should, keyword should, Good PR, as you can saw, it was successful, which is what we wanted. We're finishing and come on. So we're gonna go ahead and just pulling off that same golden image, we are going to make the changes, attempt to make the changes. We're gonna see this run and it's gonna fail. Not that I'm spoiling this or anything, but you know, gotta, gotta tell that story. Oh no, what happened there? Oh, ugh. come on, come on, JJ. The template one already existed. So obviously you need to write some better cleanup around this. I had better cleanup, I will admit, but um, computers, they're not always the nicest things in the world. But with a little bit of work and a little bit of robustness, everything kind of works a little bit better. All right. Make this modified. We do push origin. Let's try that again. Go back over here. We should see 44 going. Come on, 44. 44. I got 42, or it's uh, been 19 minutes and 45 seconds. So I want to I want to make sure people have time to ask questions if they so choose. But I want to show them that it actually does what I say it does. Come on, maybe. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe. Computers, do your work. Maybe. We've seen it kick off a couple times now. I'm a bad actor. There we go. Trigger, trigger, triggered. There we go. I call him Tico, by the way, if you didn't notice. Tico. Tico Bot Bot. You know, I, I have kids. Um, Tico's very helpful if you've ever seen Dora the Explorer. Here we go. Bad actor. We're coining the VM. And we're powering on the VM. Oops. We're waiting for that IP because Open VM Tools is fast. Um, while this is going, I strongly suggest taking a look at the tutorials for Chef Inspec. Um, it is unbelievably powerful, and because of the the there's many many plugins to run Inspec with other things. Um, it will make your life significantly easier, especially for security and validating things that you need to. Um, you write it once and it can just run and you never have to worry about the, the checks again. Um, it, as long as you put it inside of some type of pipeline uh, uh, to validate things. And I will show here because we have decided to install um, the playbook, come on. To make a liar out of me. Here we go. Ensure Nginx. So it's installing because it's it's item potent. Um, it's installing. It's making sure I, uh, uh, Nginx is there. And then we install our ops user, which I never actually showed. Um, I mean, I guess I could now, but that ops user is there, um, so I could actually SSH in as it. Um, that's my public key. Now it's installing uh, Apache two. And then it's going to run our sanity checks because sanity checks because we have policies. There we go. Now running inspec. And then, ah, wait a second. Did you see this? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Because we did not change our, um, our profile uh, at the same time. And because we had stopped Nginx due to that, the pipeline stops and then blows everything up, which is exactly what we're hoping to see. Right, um, it gives us that opportunity. Uh, I guess I missed a flag that it's not supposed to destroy the VM, but I guess it did this time. Um, again, this is exactly what we're hoping for. So you don't sneak in things you don't expect. Um, inspect is your validator and make sure that things are what you hope they are. So hopefully, um, hopefully that was educational. Um, and maybe as you saw, it was just a bunch of code flying back and forth. But uh, my my resource my access. Uh, please never hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, I literally do have the um, email address of awesome at ibm.com. Um, and I just lost the screen. Uh-oh. Where did it go? Am I still here? Hello? Oh. You're still here, but yeah, we looks like you stopped sharing your screen. So Yes, that's what I meant. Um, so I wanted to be cognizant of people to see if they have any questions or thoughts. Um, we have uh, eight minutes left. Is that right? Yeah, a little less because we'll switch over to the next speaker. But before we do, yeah, if you've got questions, folks, again, the Q&A tab to the right side of, and I know I just pointed the wrong direction because everything's backward, um, <laughs> to the right side of the the stream, uh, go ahead and ask your questions. Or are you going to be, JJ, are you going to be around in Slack for a little bit too that people can connect with you? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I again said, uh, I'm sorry that it was so quick and there was a lot of information there, but hopefully it got the point across of using Inspec to validate your templates, which is if you, in the VMware world, normally configuration management, the building up these templates aren't something you do. You don't write the code to get the template to be done. Well, people are starting to do that, but they're not doing the second side of the coin, which is validating. They are just writing the code and saying, ah, it's done. I'm cool. It's all good. Yay. But no, no, no. You need to have some validation. You need to make sure because in six months time, that person's going to change Nginx to Apache. And then when you get that template out to production, because you just cloned it out, because honestly, that's what you're going to do. You're going to be like, you're going to have a production outage. And that's usually not a good thing for your boss to find out about. <laughs> awesome. 
All right. Well, I don't have any questions for you showing up in either of the chats, but uh, we will let people connect with you. Maybe they're being shy and they're waiting for you to show up in Slack. So we'll uh, we'll let you hop over to Slack then. Thank you very much, JJ. It was that was uh, actually really enlightening. And you know, of course, the you know live demo. <laughs> it's always there to, to pop up and bite, but it was, I, I think it, it allowed you to show some good examples too of uh, some of the things you were doing. So awesome. thank you again. And uh, everybody uh, catch JJ. He'll be in the uh, Slack channel. You can go ahead and uh, ask him any questions you have.